Guys, today I'm gonna talk about the reason why we dropped down, but more importantly, I am going to talk about what's next for Bitcoin, because you do have some big things happening on the horizon, actually. We did get new information regarding FTX and what they are about to do. Big things happening in the next few days, guys. Make sure to stick around from the beginning until the end. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Chris, bringing you cryptocurrency videos every day, teaching you how to make money in this market. If you are new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now. So let's get straight into it, guys. So what you can see here is that Bitcoin did see a drop yesterday. We did see a pretty decent drop, to be honest, all the way down to $24,900. Now, I said yesterday, once this happened, that Bitcoin is breaking down. I did tell this on Twitter. The bulls need this to rally back above the red line here because we were at a critical point here when we were below the red line. Now, luckily, we did see us come down to the orange line down here. And from that point, you did see a massive pump up above the red line. So we didn't close a lot of candles below the red line. In fact, we only closed... Well, you did have this red candle closed here, and then you had this big reversal candle, and then we just went up. So that is good. We did rally back above the red line. So right now, we are not in a critical state anymore. But this is, of course, I mean, we've been pushing this red line many times. One, two, three, four times. And then now we finally broke below it. Yes, we did see a massive pump. But the fact that we're continuously hovering around these areas and we actually did break down uh, below the red line, although, yes, we did see a massive pump above it thereafter, but we did break down below it. Uh, this is not a very good sign for the immediate short term. It doesn't signal strength to the market. But what does signal a little bit of strength, at least, is that we did see a massive pump. The bulls did really step in here once we got to the orange line. Now, for traditional markets, you can see that traditional markets had a decent day yesterday. So we didn't drop because of the traditional market. So what was the reason why we did see this big drop. Well, I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. First, I want to show you this. So this shows you uh, the average kind of trajectory Bitcoin usually has until the halving. So you can see that the halving is going to happen around here. This is the average during the previous two uh, halving runs in 2015, 2019. And you can see that at the start, we did overperform. We did outperform what we usually see in the cycles. So in green, in sorry, in blue is where we are at right now. In uh, orange is what we usually see, the average. So we did outperform. And then now we are slightly underperforming. So this would suggest that we are more or less going to go sideways. And this is a disaster, like going sideways for even longer. I mean, it seems like we've been going sideways for so long already, but going sideways into the halving. This is what this chart is suggesting. So let's be prepared for some continuous boring action for Bitcoin and some sideways action until we reach the halving. Now, for me personally, I think that things are going to become more volatile pretty soon. I do think that we are going to see more volatility, but good. but there's just so many things right now people are just skeptical about. People are fearful for a lot of things right now for crypto. One of those things is that we did get some more information uh, yesterday regarding the assets that FTX holds. So you can see that 72% of their portfolio is consisting of these coins. So $1.1 billion worth of Solana they're going to sell. Uh, now, these are locked up, I think, for they will be able to sell them over two years, if I'm not mistaken. They have $560 million worth of Bitcoin. They have even more, which I'm going to show you soon. Uh, and then have Ethereum, they have other coins. And then they have about 28% of the portfolio consists of over 400 coins. Now, these are very illiquid, of course. So uh, the moment they start to sell these coins, well, they are going to go down in price a lot. So this is why we are also seeing a lot of fear in the market right now because FTX holds so much crypto and especially with these smaller altcoins, they could drop the price of these ones significantly should they start to aggressively sell. Now, we do know that they are looking to sell $200 million worth of crypto every week, actually. So that is huge. Also, what we find out is that they have $417 million worth of GBTC. 
Now, GBTC, you know, is filing to have their GBTC trust converted into an ETF. And if you do see that ETF being converted, then they will be able to sell the full 418, uh, sorry, $417 million worth of GBTC at the full price. Because right now there is a discount. I think GBTC is down like 30% compared to the actual Bitcoin. So this is why they're not selling it right now. They want to see that ETF being approved and then they could start to sell, which kind of is a bad thing. Like we are looking for the ETF to be converted, but at the same time, that would give the opportunity for so many entities to just dump their GBTC immediately and take out their money. So don't expect a massive pump immediately after the ETF is approved. But over time, of course, the ETF is going to be a huge, huge deal. But we find out that they have $417 million worth of GBTC. They also have Bitwise token, uh, Bitwise stock. They have uh, Grayscale stock. They have, um, yeah, BlackRock as well. Wow, this is like less than one, uh, less than $1.1 million worth of BlackRock equity. But hey, it's at least something. Now, one more thing that we find out is that they do have several other entities as well, equity investments in Stockweights, Toss, Triple Dot. They have 413 different uh, stocks here. So uh, that is definitely also interesting. They have $4.5 billion in these venture assets. So maybe it will be easier for them to liquidate these assets than to liquidate their crypto. Also Yuga Labs, which is interesting, the founders of... Um, Board a board a yacht club moving on to some other news guys we do have ftx who are looking to potentially claw back retail money now what does this mean it basically means that the people who withdrew their money 15 30 60 or 90 days before they filed for bankruptcy they might be forced to send back their money so in so in other words if you were concerned about ftx you withdrew your money and then everything went south. Of course, they stopped withdrawals. They stopped everything. Uh, but yeah, the uh, lawyers here from the FTX bankruptcy, they're looking to force you to send back your money that you withdrew before the, um, the bankruptcy. So this is not 100% yet. They are looking to get this approved. Hopefully, they will not be able to do that because I think it's ridiculous that people will have to uh, send back the withdrawals because they were smart and withdrew money before FTX ba went bankrupt. So we'll, we'll see what comes out of this. Now, also, in the macroeconomic situation right now, we do have some very interesting developments. The banks in the US saw their biggest weekly deposit outflows since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Now, the total bank deposits plunged to $17 billion last week alone. So this is huge because this is in combination with the fact that the banks are using, they're borrowing money like crazy from the Fed to be able to sustain themselves. So they need to borrow money from the Fed for people to withdraw their money from the bank. And this is what you saw before the banking crisis of Silicon Valley Bank and when everything went south. Now, there's two ways to look at this, just like you know. I've talked about this at length already. The first thing is that you're going to see a banking collapse and that the economy is going to get hurt and that everyone is going to get wrecked and such. Now, the second thing is that the Fed will want to prevent a banking collapse. Like what happened the last time? Well, the Fed basically stepped in or the Treasury stepped in, the FIDC or FDIC stepped in and uh, basically bailed out the banks again. So if you see that, that is going to lead into assets continuing to go up most likely. So depending on the reaction, if you do see another banking crisis, depending on the reactions of the US, that is going to have two different effects. So we will see. We'll just have to keep watching what is being said here and what is most likely to happen. Guys, if you want to start trading yourself, make sure to claim up to $30,000 in deposit bonuses over on Bybit. Also up to $60,000 deposit bonuses over on OKX. So make sure to take advantage of that. Guys, this is what I got for you today. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.